All right, percent mass is a fairly common unit, I think, when you're talking about um, actual in the lab instructions. And percent mass is yet another concentration unit, and it is calculated by dividing the mass of the solute by the mass of the solution. Notice this says solution, not solvent. So mass solute divided by mass solution, and then the whole thing times 100, since it is a percent mass. One such problem that you might see in a, a chemistry class sort of situation is this first example here. It says, what is the percent by mass of a 2.5 gram silver nitrate dissolved in 100 milliliters of water? So this one, pretty straightforward. My solute is already in grams. But to get my mass of solution, I need my solvent in grams as well. Lucky for us, this is a straightforward conversion since the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. So 100 milliliters of water is the same thing as 100 grams. So percent mass, we're looking for mass, oops, mass solute divided by mass of solution which is going to be mass solute plus mass solvent. And then we're going to multiply the whole thing by 100. So mass of our solute was 2.5 grams. Mass of solution is going to be 2.5 grams plus our 100 grams. So that's 2.5 divided by 2.5 plus 100, so that's 102.5. Gives us 0 0.024, how many sig figs can I have? Yeah, I can have two, no more though, so we'll stop there. Times 100, I haven't done that yet. So this is a 2.4% solution of sodium nitrate by mass. What you might see more typically in a lab sort of situation follows more like this second example. What mass of ammonium oxide is necessary to create a 5 by mass solution with a volume of 250 mils. So I want to end up with a 250 milliliters volume of solution. And I want to know how much ammonium oxide will I have to weigh out, mass out, on my balance in order to create this solution. Well, since they are talking about mass percent by mass, we said percent by mass is mass solute over mass Solution, S-L-O-N stands for solution, times 100. So let's plug in what we know. We need masses. Well, we're assuming this is water. They didn't tell me anything different, so I'm going to make my life easy and assume that they're using the universal solvent. That's a pretty safe bet, unless you're assuming elsewhere. Ah, pretty far. So... 250 milliliters of water is the same thing as 250 grams. Okay. So this is my final volume, so this is my mass of solution down here. So let's plug in what we know. We know that it's a 5% by mass solution. I don't know the mass of my solute, so I'm just going to put a question mark divided by my 250 gram volume of my final solution times 100. Now we just solve for the question mark. So multiply, or excuse me, divide both sides by 100. Get rid of that. Now we're going to multiply both sides by 250. I don't want to do that in my head because it's late in the day and I will surely mess it up. Oops. See? Messed it up on my calculator even. Monkey butt. I just, my fingers are not working right today. 250. There we go. So I need 12.5. Let's follow my own rules here. 12.5 number unit. Thing. 
So 12.5 grams of ammonium oxide should give me a 5% by mass solution. So um, I'll try to put up a video that has kind of a, a comprehensive review of concentration units uh, once I get to the end here. Let's see, I got time. Let's cover another concentration unit before I close out this video. We've really only got two of them left that I cover in my class. Uh, the first one is called percent volume. This is useful when you've got liquid solutions. So perhaps if you're trying to make a, a ethanol solution, 3% by ethanol by volume. Ethanol is a liquid, so is the water, so using a volume a volume calculation makes life a little bit easier. So this is volume of solute divided by volume of solution. Notice again, this lower number here is volume solution, not volume solvent. Multiply by 100 because it is again a percent. Finally, uh, the last concentration unit that I need to discuss is a mole fraction. And so that's moles of solute divided by the total moles of solution. So again, this is all the moles that you're dealing with. It's usually represented with an X and then whatever compound that you're talking about. So in the next video, I will try to put together a kind of comprehensive series of problems just so you can see one after the other after the other. But that's all for concentration units. Best of luck.